You are witnessing one of the most advanced snake robots ever created, called the Extraterrestrial Life Exploration Survey Robot. It was designed by NASA to crawl and explore the harsh terrains on icy moons such as Enceladus, one of the top candidates in the search for extraterrestrial life within the solar system. What is it about this remote and frigid little moon that has piqued NASA interest? Hello, it's great to meet you all again in a new space series by Enigma. Named after one of the giants in Greek mythology, Enceladus is one of the most intriguing satellites in the solar system. It is the sixth largest moon of Saturn and the 19th largest in the solar system, with a diameter of about 500 kilometers, roughly one-seventh the size of Earth's moon and one-tenth the size of Titan, the largest moon of Saturn. To give you a better sense of scale, the surface area of this moon is equivalent to that of Mozambique, ranking 35th in the world. Enceladus, the sixth largest moon of Saturn, has a mass of only about 100 trillion metric tons, which is roughly 18 times the mass of Earth's atmosphere. Its surface is almost entirely covered by an incredibly thick layer of ice, ranging from 30 to 40 kilometers in depth, making it one of the most reflective objects in the solar system. It reflects the majority of sunlight, resulting in surface temperatures plunging to a bone-chilling 198 degrees Celsius at noon on Enceladus, even colder than liquid nitrogen. If you were to descend to the surface of Enceladus, you would immediately experience intense cold and pain. If you were to stay, your tissues would quickly freeze, leading to numbness and rapid death. Enceladus was discovered on August 28, 1789 by William Herschel. However, little was known about it until the Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft flew by Saturn in 1980 and 1981, respectively. The turning point came in 2005 when the Cassini spacecraft made multiple close flybys of Enceladus, revealing its surface features and environment in unprecedented detail. Cassini's observations unveiled the presence of geysers, specifically water vapor plumes, erupting from the south polar region of Enceladus. These geysers are similar to the geysers on Earth, where water and steam intermittently shoot out into space at speeds of around 200 kilograms per second. Actually, over 100 geysers have been identified on Enceladus, resembling the breathing holes of a giant subterranean whale, fortunately without any actual trapped whales on land. These geysers are typically located near active fissures and release boiling water. To form such geysers, three main ingredients are required, abundant water, a heat source, and a plumbing system. The heat is generated as the tidal forces from Saturn cause the moon's interior to flex, heating the surrounding rock layers. When water from rain and snow seeps down into the fractures in the rock and comes into contact with the heated layers, it boils and is propelled back up to the surface, where it accumulates in pockets within the icy crust. When the pressure within these pockets becomes high enough, the water and steam erupt in powerful plumes, reaching heights of nearly 500 meters. Returning to Enceladus, it is clear that this moon is too small and too cold to host a conventional volcanic activity or hot magma. Instead, it possesses the necessary conditions for a different type of planetary phenomenon known as cryovolcanism or ice volcanism. Although it may sound counterintuitive, Cryovolcanoes are not fundamentally different from typical volcanoes on Earth. They both rise above the surface, whether it's land or ice, and both erupt fluid materials. The key difference lies in the substance that they erupt, which is not hot molten magma but rather a mixture of water, ammonia, methane, and chlorine compounds. This mixture represents the liquid form of icy materials, forming the basis of cryovolcanoes. On Earth, Volcanic activity occurs when deep-seated rocks melt into magma, which, being less dense than the surrounding solid rocks, rises and accumulates in magma chambers. Eventually, the magma is forced through surface fissures, erupting through volcano vents. In the case of cryovolcanism, the process is similar, with the notable difference that the solid rocks are replaced by ice. The water-based mixture, acting as a liquid magma substitute, experiences melting deep within the icy interior of Enceladus. 
As the less dense liquid rises and accumulates in subsurface chambers, it eventually gets propelled through cracks in the surface and erupts through cryovolcanic vents. The mechanisms behind the activity of cryovolcanoes are essentially analogous to those of traditional volcanoes, but with ice replacing rock and liquid water substituting for molten magma. For small satellites like Enceladus, Scientists believe that the heat necessary to melt ice and create a subsurface liquid reservoir comes from a process known as tidal heating. The tidal forces exerted by both the other moons of Saturn and the giant planet itself have a strong influence on Enceladus. This gravitational interaction generates friction and internal heating within this tiny world, causing it to become partially molten. Although volcanic activity has not been directly observed on Enceladus, a similar mechanism may be responsible for the icy plume eruptions observed on this moon. The issue lies in the fact that scientists have encountered Enceladus while it was actively venting a colossal plume of water vapor. Not only that, but it also appears to contain the necessary chemical ingredients for life. The eruption event was observed by the James Webb Space Telescope in November 2022 and was announced by scientists at a conference in Baltimore on May 17, 2023. Sarah Faggy, a planetary astronomer at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, exclaimed the greatness of the discovery, and believe me, she was not lying. This is not the first time that scientists have observed Enceladus venting water vapor plumes. However, the wider and more sensitive view provided by the James Webb Space Telescope reveals that the water jets extend much farther into space than previously seen. The water plumes are believed to be launched into space at a distance significantly larger than the moon's diameter, somewhere over 500 km. To give you an idea, the International Space Station orbits around the Earth at a distance of about 400 km. The first eruption event of Enceladus was observed in 2005 when NASA Cassini spacecraft captured icy particles shooting up through large fractures called tiger stripes near the moon's south pole. According to NASA, the powerful eruptions from Enceladus have resulted in the formation of one of Saturn's rings, known as the E-ring. It is the second outermost ring of Saturn, extending from a distance of about 180,000 km to 480,000 km from the planet's center, which is about three quarters of the distance between Earth and the Moon. Unlike the main rings, the E-ring is extremely thin, with an average thickness ranging from 10 meters to 1 km, and consists mainly of pure ice particles with diameters up to 10 meters. Cassini's observations reveal that the E-ring is over 2,000 km thick and contains tiny particles on a microscale. The analysis also showed that the water jets contain water vapor, methane, carbon dioxide, ammonia, and organic molecules, which serve as a foundation for the development of life, or more precisely, the type of life as we know it. Interestingly, some of these gases may be generated by living organisms, specifically bacteria that release methane deep beneath the surface of Enceladus. For a long time, Saturn's moon Enceladus has been one of the top candidates in the search for extraterrestrial life within the solar system. In a study published last December by an international team of researchers, a hypothesis was put forward that a methanogenic hydrotrophic ecosystem could exist within the hypothesized hydrothermal vents at the bottom of Enceladus' subsurface ocean. A methanogenic hydrotrope can utilize CO2 and H2O to produce methane gas, as you can see on the screen. If this hypothesis is accurate, the hydrothermal environment of Enceladus could be conducive to the existence of certain microorganisms within the venting plumes. Earth's hydrothermal vents and the presence of methane in water vapor plumes could be another piece of evidence for the possibility of life on Enceladus. In 2014, NASA reported that Cassini had found evidence of a large liquid water ocean beneath the southern polar surface of Enceladus, with an average depth of about 10 km, which is approximately 2.7 times deeper than Earth's oceans. This discovery further supports the potential for life to exist on Enceladus. A scientific study published in April 2020 successfully mathematically reconstructed and modeled this ocean, confirming that Enceladus possesses one of the prerequisites for life as we know it on Earth. Liquid water. 
NASA is currently discussing future missions to search for signs of life on Enceladus, and one of the proposed flagship missions is the Enceladus Orbilander. The Enceladus Orbilander spacecraft would spend between 6 months and 1.5 years orbiting Enceladus, sampling its plumes from space before transforming into a lander and touchdown on the surface for a two-year-long mission to search for evidence of life. Orbilander would carry instruments for weighing and analyzing elements, as well as DNA sequencing devices and imaging equipment. Remote sensing instruments such as cameras, broadcasting devices, and laser beams would scan the moon's surface. This estimated $4.9 billion mission could be launched in the late 2032nds using NASA Space Launch System SLS or SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. Landing on the icy moon could be achieved by the early 2052nds. Another proposed mission related to Enceladus is the deployment of an autonomous snake-like robot into the subsurface water regions beneath Enceladus' surface. The robot, called Exobiology Extant Life Surveyor Eels, would navigate the shattered surface of the moon. The snake robot would be composed of multiple modular segments capable of twisting and bending, similar to a snake maneuvering through various terrains that rovers and other landers cannot overcome. Encased in helical genes, the snake robot would move its body parts independently, generating propulsion in narrow spaces where conventional designs might get stuck or struggle to ascend or descend complex underwater terrains. These helical segments would function like flippers, aiding the robot in swimming within the undefined environment beneath the ocean floor of Enceladus. According to Hill Robinson, the initiator of the project, while conventional robots are designed to operate efficiently in certain specific terrains, the snake-like robot, on the other hand, follows the principle of I'll take care of everything myself. If you really think about snakes, you have to admit that they are quite agile. Snakes can slide smoothly on the ground, crawl on grassy surfaces, swim, climb trees, and even scale mountains if necessary. Eels has gone through multiple designs, and the research team is experimenting to find the best materials and specifications for its current version. It consists of 10 modular segments with a total length of about 4 meters and weighing 100 kilogram. It is propelled by plastic wheels with a diameter of around 20 cm on soft terrains like snow and smaller diameter metal wheels to increase traction in slippery conditions such as icy surfaces. In the final design, the snake robot may include up to 48 motion modules to enhance flexibility and provide additional space for scientific research instruments and navigation devices to cope with more challenging terrains. The front of the robot is equipped with two cameras, a built-in microphone, and a LiDAR sensor, which is a scanning device similar to radar but uses light waves to assist in analyzing and navigating through different environments and mapping a three-dimensional world over 1 billion km away from Earth. Currently, it is powered and communicates through a tether, which is undoubtedly a significant obstacle that needs to be overcome unless we find a way to transmit signals over a distance of about 1.5 billion km. In addition to high maneuverability, the robot will also need to be fully autonomous. On average, a wireless signal takes about 1.5 hours to travel that distance. To travel the distance between Earth and Mars, if the robot were manually controlled and the scientists saw an image of the robot on the edge of a cliff, it would likely have fallen to its demise at the bottom of the abyss by the time they reacted. With an estimated battery life of about 5.4 million kilometers and mountainous chasms up to 200 km long, 5 to 10 km wide, and 1 km deep awaiting it, Eels clearly needs to choose its moves wisely, as one misstep could be fatal. Although the future of the snake-like robot, Eels, on Enceladus, remains uncertain, the research team sees potential in its applications for studying ice rivers and conducting operations on Earth or exploring subsurface geological features on closer worlds like the Moon and Mars. That concludes today's video content. What do you think about the possibility of life existing on the Moon Enceladus? Let's discuss it in the comments section as usual. Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to not miss out on any space-related content from Enigma. Goodbye and see you next time.